Journey Chick on Instagram. Welcome to Crafting and Crime Daily. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode of Crafting and Crime Daily. And I do playlists each trial. So if you miss an episode of a trial, you can go back and watch it. Go back to the playlist, figure out what you've missed. The episodes are numbered. And don't forget to hit the like button and then take him out for a cup of coffee. He loves cream and sugar. But tell them, hey, the store ran out. You got to drink it black. Yeah, so hit the like button. <laughs> and tonight is when I go live on Craft With Me Wednesday. Tonight I'm going to have my buddy Cheryl. She is a loom knitter. Like, she is the best loom knitter I have ever ever met. And I have a lot of really great loom knitting friends. Um, Wambui, you know, oh, I I have so, I'm so lucky to have these um, really knowledgeable friends in the loom knitting community. But tonight we're going to get out the sock loom and Cheryl is going to teach me how to make a pair of socks. Yes. I'm going to grab myself a roll of that mandala, the, th the, the three weight. Um, we talked about it ahead of time. And uh, we're going to make socks. Now, I'm not going to make the whole sock pair of socks in a one hour episode, but she's going to get me started. She's going to teach me how to cast on for the sock. I don't know if that's a special cast on. I mean, I've built, I've loom knitted before, but maybe there's a special cast on. I think there is. Anyway, she's going to teach me. This was gifted to me by one of the, my subscribers, and I've never used it, and uh, I'm excited. Here, here's what it looks like. It, uh, it even has its own uh, loom hook, which is what that is, the loom hook. But I have a, an ergonomic one that I'll probably use. Um, so, but here, it's got a small gauge, you know, because it's for socks. I know, one, per, one of my subscribers said, are you making a pair of square socks? Uh, no. But apparently this is a sock loom. So sh tune in to that at 6 Central tonight. Um, or watch it back on the replay. Okay, journal. Let's get the journal planner out. Planner out. Let's go look in November. We did. We decorated this yesterday. Um, yes, we're all set for November. Um, I've already put in the National Day. It's National Stress Awareness Day. I put in what I'm going to talk about for this day in history. I've still got bills to pay, which is going to happen on payday. See the little dollar signs there? Payday, yes. Today's Wednesday, hump day. Mike, 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 Mike. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't have to go into the office. I can work from home. And I literally work from right here. I used to have a desk. I have a desk in the third bedroom. But uh, I just prefer to work here. I have my work computer here. I have my iPad here where I'm listening to the trials um, that I cover for you. You know, it's feast or famine with these trials. Sometimes there's no trials being covered. And now there's like tons of trials. Um, I, I understand another one started yesterday that I, I'm just not going to be able to cover for you guys. And I do apologize. But uh, I'm going to give you the rest of... The Markeith Lloyd trial, which is, uh, it has gone to the jury. There's some drama behind that. Wait till you hear about that. Um, finish up the Donald Hartung case, which is an older case that I, I picked up because there was no trials. Then all of a sudden, all these trials start. And the Ahmad Arbery case will begin opening statements tomorrow. So you're going to get some of that on Friday. Yeah, it's going to be exciting in the crafting and crime world. I got this seven painting yesterday. I wanted to show you guys this. Um, I don't want to do a separate unboxing. I'm just going to show you what it is. I haven't opened it yet. So I found out about these through Mindy. Mindy has a channel. Mindy, Mindy's Diamond Moment. She showed me a couple that she had done and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I need to try that. So I went on Amazon to find one and I found a super cute one. Now it has special drills. I think it cost me like 10 bucks, but I, I wanted to try it. It's a bubble painting. So 
let's see what this is about. And it's a super cute painting. It's poured glue. So it's even though it's rolled up like this, once we unroll it and lay it flat, it should be just fine. So I'm what it's a it says penguin. It says penguin up here. This is not penguins. I don't know why it says penguin. There's not a penguin in this. It's cats. It's not a penguin. But look how adorable this painting is. All the little cats. Yeah, they're super cute. So once you lay that flat, like you could put it under some books or something heavy. Um, it should be just fine. Let me see if it is sticky. It should be. Yeah, it's it's pretty sticky. Now, this is supposed to be bubbles. It doesn't look like bubble. Oh, I guess the bubbles are out in here. So what that is, is, let me show you the diamonds. Apparently, in addition to regular diamonds, and these are crystals, we have different size, like these are different sizes. This is, this is one size, this is a little larger and even larger. So there are three different sizes of the same color, like this dark blue that go out here. Now it does indicate where you put the different sizes. So that's kind of cool. So all in this area will be the same color, but different sizes. That's apparently what a bubble painting is, where you have different sizes of the same drill. So I guess that's the only place where we are going to have different sizes there. The rest are all just uh, normal crystals. Okay, so my impression was that you just kind of did it yourself, but they do tell you where to put it. So I guess that's cool. Let me just make sure that I'm telling you correctly here. So, yeah. Where's the... Oh, there's a little legend off here to the side. There's 18 colors. But like I said, three are the same. Let me just... Hmm, try to figure this out. So this, both of these are number one. Okay, so that matches the little tiny ones. Number two. Okay, that's the medium size. And number three. Yeah, that's the larger ones. That's interesting, but it's going to be super cute. Look at this cat. <laughs> with all the, oh my goodness. Oh, we get a little toolkit with it. Oh my goodness. So just a, a kind of a, you know, routine toolkit. But it's just a cute little painting. I just love this cat here with all these colors and this one here. It's going to be a, a really cute. So this is the area where you have the three different size drills that go into the sky, this bubble area. So that's what I've not done before. It's just, I guess it's just a special drills painting that I wanted to try. So I'm gonna put this under something flat. See, it's already straightening out. I'm gonna put it under something flat and then uh, we'll work on this for the rest of the week because this is gonna get finished up today. I still have to get my Alice back out, don't I? All right, <laughs> these drills are not going to go back into uh, all right, we're just gonna throw that aside for now. And uh, that'll be a, I don't, I guess I'll have to kit it up later. Okay. Cute painting though, cute painting. All right, I need a sip of coffee. This is trash, trash. You know, for 10 bucks, that's kind of a cute deal. Yeah, it's something different to do. If you're tired of just doing the same old, same old. Should be something we could knock out in a few days, don't you think? It's it's only what? It doesn't even give you a size on it. Yeah, there's no size on it. I love that it says penguin. <laughs> there's no penguin in it. Just cats. Has instructions on how to diamond paint. And uh, 
that's it. Product name, Penguin. Doesn't even tell you where you got it. So anyway, found it on Amazon. Okay, let's uh, diamond paint. What number did I get out? I got out a drill so I could do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Put you back into it, do it. And for you guys that do Zooms all the time, I apologize for not going into Zooms lately. I have been so busy at work and listening to tri like trials, trials and trials and more trials. But if I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it. I honestly, I love it. I, sometimes I wish I was still an attorney because it's fun to be in a courtroom. Stressful, very stressful. Because like when you're in court for a trial, you're on for 24-7. 24 7 till that for the time the things start or before it starts till the thing ends and then you talk about stress awareness you're like whew, then you like have this crash afterwards because you know the stress is over and uh i'm not gonna lie i didn't i couldn't get through it without a little xanax because it's that stressful yeah i'm gonna turn on the light and we're gonna talk about stress awareness for just a second so it's funny that today is Stress Awareness Day. Now, I have a sweater on, which is not really conducive to diamond painting because it gets in the, you know, the glue. Um, I, when I, I was asleep today and, well, uh, the cats, five o'clock in the morning, the cats were like, get up, get up. So what I've been doing is leaving the door open. I'll, I, Tootsie and I go lay in the bed and we watch TV till 11, 12 o'clock and I'm doing whatever, you know, either playing my game or doing a craft. I'm, I'm trying to fist my sister's blanket and catch up on the temperature blanket. There's Stitch! So just before I'm ready to fall asleep, I open the door because now the cats have like been running around and they're kind of ready to settle down. So they get into bed and they go to sleep. But at five o'clock in the morning, they're like, get up, mom, get up, mom. They're hungry. <laughs> they're used, they're on like a 12 hour schedule, like around 5, 5.30 p.m. we feed them. And then at 5 a.m., they're hungry. So I feed them and I'm like, I'm going back to bed. I'm tired. So I go back and I lay in the bed and I'm thinking, you know, things have been so hectic lately. Um, you know, my sister lives here now and things are just always hectic. But I love that my sister lives here. I just absolutely love, I adore her. Um, we have become super close. If anything ever happened to her, I would just be devastated. Um, and we're getting along great. It's just working out so, so well, and I'm so grateful that she's here. But, so I'm laying in bed this morning, and I'm like, I have got to do something to, like, for myself, just to, so I can take a breath, you know? So I get up, instead of going back to sleep, I get up, get dressed, and I tell Tootsie, we're going for a walk. This is one of the ways you can relieve stress. And... It's stress is good for your body. It, it really, it really is. Some amount of stress is good for you, but not too much, because then you're 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 gonna hurt yourself. Your your um, your mental health, your physical health is gonna start to deteriorate. Deteriorate. I can't say that word today. So I got up and I took Tootsie for a walk. Now I get outside and it's raining. Okay, yeah, I didn't check the weather. Well, I know. Um, it's just drizzling, like a mist almost, but it's wet everywhere. So I'm like, no, we'll just take a short walk because I'm going to do this. And I promised her. So she's like, come on, mom. You know? So, so we go out and we walk around the neighborhood. This is what you need to do. If like, just, if you can't find time for physical activity, fill up the bathtub and lay in it and just soak. Now, <laughs> I told my sister to do this last night. Go get in the tub, fill it up. So she's like, how am I gonna get out of the tub? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I used to have that problem until I went to physical therapy. Once I got done with physical, you know, you know, I, you guys who follow me know that I've been 
in and out of physical therapy, but what am I, for when I was going for my knee, it, they strengthened my knee to the point where I can get out of the tub now. Um, but if you can't get out of the tub, take a nice long hot shower. Yeah. Do something that just breaks up that stress where you can just breathe and not have to think about anything. That's what I love about my walk this morning. It wasn't a long walk, 10 minutes, 15. Um, but like I said, it was raining. Um, and it just will make you feel better throughout the day if you do something for yourself. Just, to, you know, I know we're all super, super busy. I get it. We are swamped. But you've got to take just a few minutes to take care of you. So just say, just stop whatever it is and say, I got to take a few minutes for myself. I'm going to go take a hot bath. I'm going to take a hot shower. I'm going to go for a walk, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be a long walk or a long shower. Just something that breaks up the day and that just gives you a chance to breathe. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about crime, crafting and crime, what you came here for. So we'll talk a, a little bit about the Donald Harton case. And let me just bring you up to speed in case you... You've, you've forgotten poor Donald the witch. Donald is a witch. Studies Wiccan. So yesterday I talked about this jailhouse snitch. So the testimony today was geared towards making what he said credible, which good because I'm not sure I believed him. Here is what the trial is about. Donald Hartung is on trial for murdering his mother and two brothers. His mother and brother John, who was uh, autistic, were hit over the head with a hammer and their throat was cut. His brother, Richard, was shot and his throat was cut. Then they were drug, well, the brothers were in a, the den and mom was out in her chair when she was killed and was drug down the hall into John's room and then covered up with clothes. So one of the things that the jailhouse snitch said was that before Donald killed his mother, he tortured her. And he mentioned that he, he did something with her pinky I, I didn't catch what it was he did, but because he wanted the combination to the safe and he, she, she gave him the combination to the safe. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Now, during the investigation, there was a safe that was found, just a regular safe, and it was open, but there was another safe. And this is something that the snitch, the snitch knew about. He knew Donald had told him that there was more than one safe. The police did not know this until they interviewed this jailhouse snitch. They had no idea that there was more than one safe. Here's how they learned there was another safe. After they're done with their crime scene investigation, the woman who works for the probate lawyer, she's a paralegal, she comes out. What are you cats doing? Oh, he's, <laughs> she's playing with her dinosaur. Pearl, Oh, she's so cute with that dinosaur. Wait, wait a minute, she's got, oh, she, she has this little mouse that she, play, she carries this little mouse everywhere she goes. It's, it's a cat toy. She loves it. So she's playing with the mouse and the dinosaur. Anyway, uh, I was talking about, okay, the paralegal. She goes out to the house. After the crime scene thing is all done, she works for the probate lawyer. She hires a cleaning team to come in, rip out all the carpet, just, just basically strip the house, take out all the clothing, you know, uh, anything of value was placed in um, a storage locker. But, it, you know, if it wasn't of value, it was just tossed 
including the carpet. So when these when this cleaning team pulls up the carpet in mom's closet, there is a safe in the floor. I'm going to show you a picture. One of these corners, one of, one of the four corners here, there's going to be a picture. It's a safe built into the cement of the floor and it's covered up by carpet. So Donald probably had no idea where this safe was. He knew there was another safe because he told the jailhouse snitch, there's another safe. This is when the police learned there's another safe because now this paralegal, she's got to call the police and say, hey, well, I'm going to send you a picture. There's another safe here. Now, I never found out what was in the safe. I haven't heard what was in the safe. I don't know if we know what was in the safe. Uh, the next person to testify was the actual probate lawyer who wrote up the will. Uh, he said he wrote the will for the mother in 2009. He indicated that she left uh, in the event her husband predeceased her, which he did. He died in 2012. Everything would go to her sons, John and Richard, and she specifically excluded Donald Hartung, uh, Donald Wayne Hartung, because she had provided for him during his lifetime. She said it was not for lack of love and affection. It was because during his lifetime she had provided for him. Now, this lawyer, now, one of the things that the defense had said during the opening was that, first, we don't even know if Donald was aware of this will. Now, we know from the jailhouse snitch that he was aware of this will, that his mom told him about it. And secondly, the defense makes a big deal about how Donald Hartung Jr., his son, is specifically left out of the will, uh, not the Donald Hartung. So... This probate lawyer testifies, that was my error. She specifically meant her son, Donald Hartung, not Donald Hartung Jr. He says, the junior part was my error. I should have caught it when I reviewed it. She did not mean to exclude her grandson. Um, she did exclude the grandson, but specifically in that paragraph, it, she was referring to her son. So I thought that was interesting. Then they bring the lead investigator on and some of the things he testified to uh, was there was nowhere in the police file had they mentioned the name of Donald Hartung's dog, but the jailhouse snitch knew the name of Donald Hartung's job, uh, dog. So even if he had read the discovery, he would not have found out Donald Hartung's dog's name unless Donald told him. So that gives some more credibility to this jailhouse snitch. Uh, just briefly going back to the uh, estate lawyer who drew up the will, he said, as it stands now, the sole heir to everything that belonged to the mother and John and Richard, the sole heir of everything is Donald Hartung now. I wasn't so sure. I didn't know if Richard or John had a will. It doesn't appear that they did. So Donald is the sole heir of everything, unless he is disqualified. If he is disqualified from inheriting everything, then the sole heir becomes his son, Donald Hartung Jr. So, I, he, so he clarified that, the estate lawyer. So let's talk about the Markeith Lloyd case. Oh my God, things got so interesting yesterday. Closing arguments, uh, that's what they began with. So they bring the jury in, they are sequestered, which means they have been in this hotel now for a few weeks, a week or more. Um, all last week, they had trial on Saturday, they were off on Sunday, so that a week and a half, they've been in this hotel trying to entertain themselves. No cell phones, no electronics. They get to watch TV. Um, and that's it. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> the prosecution's closing argument was just, meh, meh, meh. you know, I was, it wasn't inspiring. It, you know, he kind of went over the jury instructions, which here's something I haven't put too much focus on. And maybe the jury, it appears later on, there's some indications that the jury wasn't really focused on it either. Because the most, the main focus of this trial has been the death of Deborah Clayton, Officer Clayton. Well, he is also 
the defendant, Mark Keith Lloyd, is also charged with the attempted murder of Officer, I can't even remember his name, another police officer. So what happened was after he killed Deborah Clayton, the officer, and during his escape from the Walmart, he gets into his car, he leaves, he's now being followed by another officer. He sees the other officer behind him, so he pulls over into that apartment building where he carjacks another car. So he gets out of his car, but he pulls over into that parking lot. The other officer pulls in and parks his vehicle in a manner so that it will shield him when he gets out of the car. So he gets out of the car, Mark Keith Lloyd gets out of his vehicle and starts shooting. He, shy, he fires a warning shot at this officer. So the prosecution is calling, saying that this was not a warning shot. This was the attempted murder of that police officer. So he's charged with the attempted murder of this guy that pulls him over. This is where he runs away from his vehicle goes and carjacks another vehicle in those apartment buildings, and then he gets out the other way by driving through a fence and up a hill. Um, so I, I had not really focused on that attempted murder. So he's charged with first-degree murder and attempted first-degree murder of a law enforcement officer, which that's, that adds another element to the murder. You know, it, not only do you have to prove premeditation, but you also have to prove that he knew that they were law enforcement officers. And he did testify that he knew that they were law enforcement officers. So that's not a big hurdle there. So uh, the defense pointed out something I thought was interesting, that it only takes a second to actually premeditate a murder. And the example he gave was... You know, you're sitting on your front porch and a mosquito lands on you and you, you know, your immediate response is to like smack it and kill it. Why? Because it's going to eat the crap out of your arm. It's going to itch like hell. But in that nano of a second, you formed the premeditation to kill that mosquito. And that's all it takes is like a nano of a second for you to form a premeditation to kill someone or something. So I thought that was a good analogy on the part of the prosecution. Then the defense, you know, they have lunch and the, um, <laughs> then the defense gets up and says, I'm going to talk to you for two hours. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, no. And every time, like he would, the volume kept going up and down because every time he would turn into a certain direction to talk, you couldn't hear what he was saying. Oh, it was so annoying. Um, so he goes on and on for two hours about, you know, ugh, the, how Mark Heath Lloyd is insane. And, you know, he goes over the testimony of the witness, the expert witness about why he's insane and the elements of insanity. And, um, yeah, it basically just reiterates all of the evidence, um, in an argumentative form of, as he should. And the interesting part was he, he has a female attorney at the table with him, assisting him. What she's doing really is babysitting Markeith Lloyd. And he, you know, the whole time his lawyer is up doing closing arguments, Markeith Lloyd is like whispering to this attorney and he's writing things down and he's insisting that she interrupt the attorney. So she gets up because I know she wouldn't do this without the insistence of her client. She gets up there and I don't real. I think she didn't realize that the microphone, the attorney's microphone had not been shut off. And she's like, man, he's really harassing me. He wants you to talk about blah, 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 blah. Like she gets up, she interrupts the lawyer, goes up to him, not realizing his mic is on and says, he's really harassing me. <laughs> so I thought, I was, we weren't supposed to hear that, but he's really harassing me. I mean, this Marquise Lloyd, it, he's a smart guy. He is running the show there. And I will give you some examples of that later on, because this gets really interesting later on. So they finish closing arguments. The judge 
tells, uh, she announces the six people, they had six alternates, six, 18 people sequestered. So that she tells, she announces the numbers of the six alternates and she tells everybody that's not an alternate, you can go back, you can start deliberating. So they take their notebooks and their jury instructions and they go back into the room and they're told to wait for the evidence, it'll be brought back to you. So then she tells the six people, I can't let you go yet because if if the finding is that he's guilty of first degree murder, then we have to decide the penalty phase. So I'm going to send you back to the hotel. You can have dinner. By now it's like 4.30. She's like, I'm going to send you back to the hotel. You can have a nice dinner. Um, but you're not allowed to talk about the case still because you're still jurors. Something might happen. We still might need to replace you. You know, you're still going to be here for the penalty phase. I'm sure they're all like, ooh, thank you know. <laughs> I kind of would have been pissed if I was sat there all for like all that time and was sequestered. I'd be, I'd be pissed if I found out, Hey, you're not a juror. <laughs> you're just an alternate. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it would be something that will make me very happy anyway. So the jury's out at about so now we're thinking, ah, you know, everybody in the live chat, because when I watch these trials, there's a live chat. Everybody in the live chat's like surmising how long it's going to take the jury to reach a verdict. You know, it's going to be really quick. It's going to be within an hour. Well, probably about 10 minutes later, the feed comes back on and there's the judge and she brings in the jury. Did she bring in the jury? No, she didn't bring in the jury. The judge is there. The defense is there. The client's there. Markeith is there. So... She says they have questions. So there's like three pages of questions. They want to know if they can have transcripts of certain testimony. And so the consensus is no, you can't. That, you know, if there's certain testimony that you really need to have read, we can read it back to you. So they send back the answers. To, I forget what the other questions were. So they send back answers to the questions. So now we're thinking, okay, they're going to deliberate. Well, a few minutes. Oh, they also wanted a list of all the evidence. Now, interestingly enough, there was a list of all the evidence that's being kept by the clerk, but it also has her notes all over it. So they said, we're going to, what the answer to the question was, yes, we'll get you a list. We're getting it. So what they had, to, the two lawyers had to sit and white out <laughs> make a copy of the list, white out all the notes. And yeah, it was a process. So <laughs> to get them a list of the evidence. So about 10 minutes later, the feed comes back. Another question. So then they say that they've provided a list. Here's a list of the transcripts we want to be read back. <laughs> like in their entirety. <laughs> all of, all of the uh, officer who stopped Markeith on that attempted murder that we just talked about where he pulls him over and he parks his car to shield him and he gets out and Markeith shoots at him. They want all of that testimony. They want all the witness testimony regarding that. They want all Markeith's testimony regarding that, which proves they were not paying attention during any of that part of the testimony because the focus of the trial had been on the death of Deborah Clayton, the officer Clayton, not this tangential attempted murder so uh, and it's like four different transcripts so the the court reporter says that's going to take me at least till tomorrow morning to get that to you because she's got to go back home stay up really late maybe all night to get those things transcribed and back to the attorneys the next morning so they send a note back to the jury um we, we will get those for you you'll have them tomorrow morning to be read so continue your deliberations. So they continue their deliberations. Then they come out. <laughs> now the feed just stays on because it's just this back and forth thing with the jury. Then they come out with another note. They want thumbtacks and tape or something. <laughs> and she's like, do we have thumbtacks? <laughs> do we have any thumbtacks? So they find what the jury's asking for and they send that back. So a few minutes later, they get another note. We also want to see, 
you know, they named off seven other transcripts that they wanted regarding the first degree murder. So now they've asked for a total of 10 transcripts, 10 or 11 transcripts to be read back. So the judge is like, y'all talk about it and let me know what you think. <laughs> she's, this poor judge. Um, she's, you can tell she's just like at a loss for words, at a loss. Uh, I love this judge though. So she, so while they're talking about it, the, the prosecution and, and the defense attorney, they're talking amongst themselves about, you know, what is, what are we going to do? Because in order to do this, first the court report has to transcribe those 10 testimonies, uh, which would probably take another day. And then to be read back would take probably an, another day day and a half, eight hours at least. So um, while they're discussing it, the judge is crafting this note. And so finally she says, okay, here's what I'm, here's what I'd like to say to them. I would like to tell them that they need to rely on their collective memories and their notes. Otherwise, if there's, if they need anything beyond that, from the transcripts, they need to be very specific. What exactly in the transcript are you looking for? So she sends that note back. Now we're at like seven o'clock at night, Eastern time. There are in Florida, six o'clock where I am. And I'm like, I've got dinner going. <laughs> I'm still listening. To, I'm like, I want to eat. It's almost done. <laughs> so the judge says, if they come back with more specifics, you know, because she told them to come back with more specifics. When they come back with more specific uh, information, I'm going to send them back to the hotel for dinner and to go to bed and they come start delivering tomorrow. So, because you could tell she had had enough. She was done. She was over it. So she, uh, the, the jury comes back and then they t tell them very specifically what they wanted out of just a few of the transcripts. So it really narrowed it down. Um, so she tells the jury, okay, this we can get to you. We'll read these things in the morning. Then you can be begin your deliberations. But right now you're going back to the hotel. You're going to have dinner <laughs> and you can relax for the rest of the evening and stop. You, but you're not allowed to talk about this. Just leave it. Um, you know, take a breath, some stress relief, right? Like we talked about, <laughs> like the judge needed it. She's like, I need to go for a walk with my dog because I'm going to kill somebody. Like the, the people in the live chat were all, we were all stunned, stunned. Nobody asked for 11 transcripts to be read back. It's unheard of, absolutely unheard of. Um, like, wh where were they during the trial? Were they not listening? Did they, you know, I don't, I don't understand. Everybody thought they were going to go back, convict him, and come back out. It, that this was a no-brainer. There's a video. <laughs> he shot her. I mean, wh what do you need all these transcripts for? So, they're apparently taking their job very, very seriously. So, that will continue. Now, on to the Ahmad Arbery case. They have narrowed the jury pool down to 65 candidates. So today, Wednesday, they're going to narrow the 65 down to 12 and some alternates, 12 jurors, several alternates. I don't know how many alternates they're going to choose. Um, and then start the trial on Thursday. So I will cover that for you. That's going to be a really interesting case. So let's talk about very quickly, because I know I've gone on for a while. These have been long shows this week. I'm telling you, these trials are so interesting. So interesting. Um, let's talk about this day in history. Russia sent a dog into space. Uh, they actually, and this was the first dog. Let me just tell you what year it was. They had not sent a manned space flight yet, but it's, but pre, pre, <laughs> 
The predecessor to sending a man into space was sending dogs. So the first dog gets sent into space by the Soviet Union in 1957. And his name was Laika. Laika had been a stray out on the street. He was part Siberian Husky. They just picked him up off the street. And they put him on this Sputnik 2 spacecraft and they put all these electrodes all over, all over him and life-saving equipment, you know, to keep him alive. And they send him into space and the poor dog dies of stress. <laughs> he like overheated and panic. That's how he died. Can you imagine? He's probably like, you know, <laughs> poor dog. And they did this like a dozen more times and at least half of the dogs died um, before they actually sent a manned space flight. Um, and that was in 61, 1961. So from 57 to 61, they kept sending dogs out there. Strange. Not my dog. No, stray dogs. But yeah, so I'm a dog lover. <laughs> Poor dog. Panic. You die from panicking. Oh, the that's awful. Anyway, that's the show for today, guys. Don't forget, 6 o'clock tonight is Craft With Me Wednesday. Please come tune in. We always have a good time when I'm trying to learn something. Yes. <laughs> We're going to do sock looms. We're going to make some socks. We're going to start to make a pair of socks. I might get one done and not the other. Who knows? <laughs> also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed the content of the channel today. And then take it out for a cup of coffee. But then when you get there, tell them, hey, they ran out of cream and sugar. You got to drink it black. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And don't forget to subscribe. If you made it all the way through and you enjoyed it, subscribe. And don't forget the notification so you don't miss any episodes. Because these trials are super interesting. Yep. Something great to listen to while you're crafting, crocheting, coloring, whatever it is you're into. Yep. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.